Hello. Morning. Yeah. yeah, we were talking about Betsy Coe's show from the other night where she was doing DNA. Yay, Betsy Go on the DNA. Very excited. Learning, learning lots. Yeah. Oh, uh, and she didn't invite me. I had I, I, what's up with that, Betsy? I know. You want to come tomorrow? We have a repeat tomorrow. No, I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to be at the cottage tomorrow. Oh, We're in the, the middle of a windstorm. It's, it's a little cool for way? cottage weather, isn't it? <laughs> oh, the cottage has been completely redone. Um, it is winterized. It has in-floor heating. It's got a wood stove. It in has floor heating? solar. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Sounds cozy. Nice. Yeah, I've never been in the winter. So, yeah. Morning, everybody. Brian, Brian, how we got here, genealogy. Good day, eh? He beat everybody here this morning. Wow. Hillary's here. John Tyner's here. Let's see. Uh, Jory Jordan's here. Mm. Susie Carta. Let's see. Going down. Lisa Gervais. Hey, Lisa. Lisa. I'm waving over to Canada. Yeah, that's right. Actually, it's this way. Hey, Canada. I'll wave there. I'm waving in your direction. There you go. Um, Sharon Hayes, good morning from Alabama. Mm. Uh, Janine, hello from Tennessee. No Scottish ancestry, so only peripheral that I could research. Hmm, I didn't even see the question for that, but that sounds interesting. Let's see. Mary Sleppy. Hey, Mary, how are you? Oh. Mary's one of my favorite uh, researchers nice. for the Dillard family, right? Dillard? I was no, scrolling or... too fast and I misread her name. I thought, Mary Sleepy. Oh, I'm sorry, sorry Mary. Family. Oh, uh, let's see. Uncle by marriage. See, I got to quit reading. Um, <laughs> Hillary <laughs> King. We have two Hillary's today. Two. Oh. What are we going to do? Hey, from Ohio. Mindy Silva's in here. Mm -hmm. I don't know why she's not in here. Uh, <laughs> Robert Allen. I'm waiting for Tommy Buck to show up. Oh, yes. I got to give. I'm going to give Tommy Buck a really hard time. Oh, no. From Louisiana. Mm hmm. I am, and I'm going to tell you why I'm going to give Tommy Buck a hard time. Oh, are you? Okay. You ready? Sure. Is it the question? Yeah. Question mm. of the week. Tommy Buck. Okay, so question <laughs> of the week. What's in your genealogy toolbox? Do you have a genealogy toolbox? Anybody? Toolbox. Betsy? Uh, yeah. I, I, I set up a whole whole set of bookmarks that, that give me quick access to a, a lot of the different sites and yes. tools that I use. So. Tommy Buck, it, Tommy Buck is here and he says, why? <laughs> um, oh, gosh. Brian read Mary's last name is Slappy. Oh. That's funny, Brian. <laughs> okay, so. Mary might slap you all of us. <laughs> genealogist toolbox. You know, I'm going to say something right off the top of the bat okay. and see if she sends me a, a, a promo button for her site. Cindy's List. Oh, yes. Cindy's list is huge, 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 huge for finding just about anything, uh, de uh, anything genealogy wise. So if you don't know Cindy's list, it has a lots and lots and lots and lots of pop up ads. But she has to have some way of supporting the site. So get over the ads. And if you have something you can't find. Check out Cindy List. She may have a link to it, and she keeps that stuff so up to date. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. uh, the question is, what is in your genealogy toolbox? I had to show Brian. <laughs> all Greg's tools. Yes, all Greg's tools. There you go. Sorry. <laughs> Wiki Tree is in my DNA toolbox. Oh, there you go. Um, Twenty-four answers. Now, Tommy Buck, mm -hmm. how long did it take you to write this answer? Wow. You ready? You ready? It's not. We, we just, okay, that looks factory. reasonable. There we go. And then, oh, it keeps on going. Oh, oh yeah. Fabulous. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> Excuse me. I'm even allergic to it. Oh, my goodness. So look at that. Wow. Isn't that crazy? Tommy Buck. Wow. Did you even Very do impressive. anything yesterday besides this? <laughs> Okay. That is so cool. That's that a great is... list. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to go ahead and say, okay, let's let's do this. Oh, we don't have a best answer anymore. What? Oh, did they take that away? Yeah, no, there's a star there, right? Oh, there we go. Yeah. There we go. 
There you go, Tommy Buck. Aww. I just don't know how you got anything done. <laughs> yeah. um, one thing you left out of here is um, find a grave is not as big in Canada as it is everywhere else. So you mm. might want to add Canadian tombstones to that mm. list. Canadian tombstones. Um, I would also add Cindy's list to this list. Yeah. Well, I didn't see that in there. I love that you put up the website calculators, uh, oh, the nice. relationship mm -hmm. charts. I would also post a uh, link to Gephi, which is a network charting application that is open source. So it's free. Mm -hmm. Um, and you can really easily do a network chart if you download stuff and you use DNA GEDCOM. You mm -hmm. can take DNA GEDCOM's uh, import of your data from all of the sites and create an incredibly crazy network chart in Gephi quite easily from, from that. So mm -hmm. check Gephi out. Okay. Uh, GEDmatch, website that? DNA tools, GEDmatch. That's the only one that you've got up here. They do have good tools. I would add DNA Painter. I would oh, add wow. um, the Shared Cinnamorgan Project, which is on DNA Painter. Um, I would also add um, Wikitree's DNA tools. Mm -hmm. um, I would also add uh, minorydna.org and DNA GEDCOM. Mm -hmm. So there's quite a few DNA website tools that you might want to add to that. Um, website maps. Um, mapsofus.org, very U.S. centric. And Tommy, you did a great job with this. I would add, um, Alesh probably has some great ideas for yeah. European uh, sites for maps, but I would also add Google Maps for Genealogists. It's a Facebook group uh, that Lisa Louise Cook runs mm -hmm. uh, that is very good. Uh, website Miscellaneous, Illinois and Texas. That's not Louisiana, Tommy. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm, interesting. Yeah. Um, and the Mac apps, love that you've added those. Um, mm -hmm. And obviously you're a Mac user. I'm so sorry. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, there's, there's lots of uh, Mac apps. I'm a Linux person and I would add the open source uh, program called Gramps, uh, gramps.org. Um, that is the very much like all of the other family tree DNA programs, but you can actually uh, like download your JEDCOM from Wikitree and save it on your computer. So I back up all of my Wikitree information because, you know, I'm a good backup person. So you, I back it up and I save a JEDCOM every few months from Wikitree and I can open it on Gramps very easily. Um I love Jennings Carnegie Public Library. That's so funny. Mm -hmm. So, so good. Mm -hmm. YouTube channels. You don't have uh, the Wikitree channel listed here. Ooh. Maybe it's implied. What What's up with that? Yeah, really. <laughs> All right. Um, so that's really good. Tommy Buck, that's a very good Nice list. work. That's a nice, nice work. It's very U.S. centric. Um, so if, if we find one that might be better, mm -hmm. there are some people who have uh, some other information oh, that nice. they popped up underneath his. Uh, Pip Shepard's got a good one. The community. Mm -hmm. This community. Discord. Uh, so he's, he's talking about Wikitree. Oh, right. Uh, this community. Private message. <laughs> this, community, <laughs> this community. Projects. Yes. Uh, find a grave when they're right. When they're right. Search when they're right. Yeah. Jed match. So they make it. Mm -hmm. uh, New Zealand members. <clears throat> so New Zealand's birth, death, death, and marriage. So if you have another place that you are looking at uh, doing information on and research, there are a lot of good lists on here. Um, somebody has Fold3 on here. Hmm. Um, and I'm surprised newspapers.com didn't show up. Hmm. DuckDuckGo. A lot of people oh. like DuckDuckGo because it doesn't keep track of what you're doing, mm -hmm. like a lot oh. of the other ones do. Statue okay. of Liberty passenger search lists oh. and there is that site called ships lists be careful if you use somebody's site make sure you cite that site in your citation citation was that alliteration <laughs> what do you call that that's not alliteration Cite citation uh, source citations yeah so wikitree family search genianet be careful with genianet oh mm -hmm. uh, let's see helpers 
translators, Italian. Who's mm. answering? Judy Gee is answering this stuff. So she's got she's got tips too. She's not mm -hmm. just got um, sites and information. Marion Cerruti is all over all of this, answering all these questions. Yeah, and look. Yeah. Skepticism and common sense mm. from Matthew mm -hmm. Sullivan. Library and Archives Canada. Oh, the Druan Collection. Uh, if you aren't familiar with that, that is a Catholic church uh, collection. And it, it includes some other church records because the Catholic church was the only group that was keeping records in early 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 canada and they are mm. incredible records yes and if there was if there were people that happened to be in the community the catholic church also kept track of them which was great yeah and the druin collection has spread like there's there's some ontario northern ontario ones and there's also some in um, northeastern um states Dr yeah the Duran collection as well well the, the northeastern u.s was a part of canada for a long time well, it was yeah, they yeah. canada was a part of the u.s for a long yeah time. and there's a lot of french canadian names that. there right even still yeah uh i do a lot of browsing at family search uh antonanti because italian records uh irish genealogy ie because irish records Mm -hmm. JSTOR Library of Congress. This is from Lucy Savaggio Diaz. I only, ju I just like to say her name. <laughs> um, yeah. Let me. Let's see what did somebody do a quick Google Translate on that. But I think it's talking about telling you how to search with the the um, quotation marks around the name. Right will get you specific information. If you take the quotation marks, you might get every name for that person. Mm -hmm. Right. Greg's going to check me on that. Okay. My Heritage, WikiTree, Genie, Ancestry, Find a Great, Billions, Graves, and U.S. Census. These are my main sources I followed using checking the data and smart match merges. Interesting. So, uh, interesting. The Peerage. There's great stuff from John Ackard. Notebooks, scratch paper, something to write with, no blood yet. <laughs> and of course, a computer. That is a great list. That is a great list. I have to, when somebody sends me an email with a 15 or 20 names in it, I have to actually put them in a tree and on a piece of paper before I can understand what they're trying to tell me. You know, my grandfather's brother was James Joyce's sister. And I'm like, what? How do I figure that out? Um, YouTube. Hollywood Graveyard, hosted by Arthur Dark. Dozens of episodes visiting grave sites of notables all over the world. That's funny and fun. Mostly church books. Don't forget to upvote these questions, too. Carrie Undbelkin says, um, mostly church books, farm history books for the various municipalities in Norway. Uh, so check these out for other than U.S. stuff. Family Search, Internet Archive. Internet Archive is really good. Mm -hmm. You can go back to the Wayback Machine and find information out from there as well. Um, I love how Marion Cerruti is talking about how useful Bibles can be. If you have a fam family Bible, make sure you catch a copy of that. Get a copy of the, the page that has a publishing information so that the date of that Bible is included with the information. And we have a new list coming down here from Margaret Meredith. Uh, she's got legacy desktop software, which is not free, but it's a good software, uh, like Family Tree Makers coming back. Um, a new tool in my toolbox, which has proven useful for searching my wife's family here in southeastern Ontario, is the Community Archives of Belleville, and Hastings County. Talk about giving a shot, shout out to a local history group. Yeah, Greg. Uh, the usual ones, but when I get stuck, I go to name, name, year. There you go. Richard Hill gives us that information from Ontario. The three Ps. Patience. If you can't find the answer today, you might tomorrow. Perseverance. Never give up on finding the answer, no matter how long it takes. And that's like doing a Google search. Don't stop at number 10. Go to page 12. Go to page 15. Keep going in those Google searches because you find stuff. Persistence. Keep asking the question. See rule number one. That's from Ken Parman. I like that list of his toolbox. Um, 
my favorite websites for Puerto Rican. There you go. Kios de Como, uh, bar none the most visited page for me. I'm thinking linking this page for Church Index's film book. So for Puerto Rico, if you've got some stuff. Whereas uh, I was thinking that was going to be Karen uh, Karen Lowe giving us that. Alexis Abreu. I, I wonder if Alexis is in the Puerto Rican thing. That's great. Genealogy TV on YouTube. My own custom genealogy database. Leaf. Ah, hey, Leaf. How are you doing? Uh, oh, she's giving us some. Here you go, Greg. You read this one. Can you even see it? I've got it blown. She's talking about uh, built on post gray SQL, PHP, Perl, Gentoo, Linux workstation. Yeah, you go. Data model from the master genealogist. So if you really want to go 20 years ago and figure out that development, go for it. In Australia, there's a Trove, uh, Canada, World War I service records at the Library and Archives Canada. Uh, census records for us. Uh, the United Kingdom, oh, and the 1931 census for Canada is going to be coming out soon. I think somebody mentioned that in the mm -hmm. chat just a bit ago. Yes. Uh, UK birth, death, and marriages, New Zealand. So check out these lists, folks. These people got some good stuff going on. Here's some more UK-based stuff. Uh, family search, Chris Wilt. Find a name in a particular time period. I use Google search and Google Books. And they're actually telling you how to do it. That's fun. That's from uh, Annie X. And I have a pretty long list. Woo! Canadian, Alberta, British Columbia, Manitoba, Nova Scotia, Ontario, Saskatchewan, Canadian photo projects, England. I wonder why there's so many Canadian references in our morning show, uh, Greg. Australia, USA. Boy, that's a really short list there. But Tommy took care of it. Sweden sources, non-country specific. You know what, Tommy? I might have to bump you off the best answer list and put that one up there. <gasps> I'm not kicking him out of the show, though. <laughs> Love you, Tommy. <laughs> uh, websites, birthday cat. Wait. That's <laughs> Tommy, did you answer twice? You did. No. <laughs> Oh my gosh, it threw his, his answer to the bottom of the list? No way. It took me to the very beginning page. That's why. Oh, so, because you hit the Yeah, start. yeah, because I oh, it no. said next. Okay, let's go back <laughs> to where we were. Woo! Whew. It's going to be even more trouble. Genealogy TV <laughs> on YouTube. And I'm surprised Brian says how we got here, genealogy on YouTube. There we go. Uh, Marie Hargis. And then adding some things to what Tommy Buck listed from Bonnie mm -hmm. Day. She's talking about some specific stuff. Toledo, Lucas County, Maine Library, genealogy floor. So just the whole floor of the library, she has like in her TARDIS, in her little toolbox. There she goes. Amy Johnson Crow's 52 Ancestors in 52 Weeks. I like that one as well. Uh, Roots Magic, Relative Finder, Family Tree, DNA, Wiki Tree. So that was... The question of the week. Sorry, Tommy. I, I do like you, man. <laughs> <laughs> Tommy's great. <laughs> Tommy is great. I was like, that was so shocking that it flipped me back. So sorry. I'm going international. You're going back to international? Yeah, that's where I went. Okay. And then I should, I wish I could do two. And then I would yeah. add, see, but Tommy's is right underneath. Hi. Oh, there we go. So Tommy's that's... list is the next list. So, right. All right. Is, is he mad at me? Uh, I don't know. I haven't seen him comment in a while. Maybe he's no. left us. No. Yeah, okay. So, no. <laughs> so that's the question of the week. And it's, you got uh, 10 minutes now, Greg. 10 minutes? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let me share my screen. So there was the, the, the one that you um, asked me to translate. And I muted myself because I figured I'd be typing a lot and I didn't want you to hear my keys. So thank you, Lisa, for telling me to unmute myself um, as, uh, was, as I was commenting on some of the other things you were saying and no one was hearing that, well, which is fine. But there's the there's the original thing. And let me show you the- um, Here's what Tommy has to say. Oh, well, what does Tommy has to say? He just said, nope. nope. <laughs> <laughs> okay, nope it is. Um, I have actually started using a, a different app uh, for translation as opposed to just Google Translate. It's yeah. called Deep 
deep L D E D E E P capital L. Mm -hmm. And so there's an app version, but there's also a website. So you can go is to the that, website. Okay. So that is not just uh, Apple specific. It's not Apple specific. No, okay. no. Deep um, L. I mean, this is the Mac version of the app. And Why so you, do you choose that rather than? Well, Apple? one of the things I do, uh, I choose it is because, well, um, it's very easy to switch to the, so if I wanted to uh, switch that into Italian, it would automatically translate into, like, I find this really quick and easy to switch into different languages. Mm -hmm. um, but the really cool thing is that when you install it, you can, you can have it set up so that there's a, there's a, um, a key, uh, a key code or a key command. So if I put, like, if I just type, highlight that sentence there, and I want to translate it, if I hit, con uh, command C twice in a row, like you know how Command C or Control C on a on a, a PC uh, copies text. If right. you do that copy command twice in a row, then it automatically pops up what you copied into the translator. So instead of copying, going into a separate window for Google Translate and then pasting, mm -hmm. it just automatically does that. And because I had um, it detects, it usually auto detects. And if it has a trouble because it, because of the wording, you can change, you can tell it what language it was in, but usually it auto detects really well. So this is what I copied. And because I had previously had French down, that's what it translated into. So when I went to here, I just double click, uh, control C, control C, and there popped into Swedish, uh, switch, translate into French, or I can change it to English and there you have it. Hmm. So there's my quick tip of a, a tool that I actually use quite a bit now. Um, and in case you weren't aware of it. There we go. There's another tool for our toolbox. Another tool for the toolbox. Deep L. <laughs> Deep L. Yeah. Deep and L. I started using it um, a couple of years ago when I was doing a ministry of education project that had to be in English and French. And um, my, uh, my native French speaking um, teachers we're saying that the deep L did a better job. It's not perfect, but it did a better job on, do, on doing the translations than the Google Translate for some of the stuff that they needed. We so. have an announcement. Announcement. Oh, oh. Last day to watch the symposium videos from <sighs> WikiTree Day. WikiTree Day. Woohoo. <laughs> okay. Go watch those. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. Okay. Um, but. The profiles of the week. Yes. The focus is on the Potterverse. Um, and of course, this was um, came to fore because the actor actor who played Hagrid, Robbie Coltrane, mm -hmm. passed away recently. You say Hagrid, Hagrid. I say Hagrid. I do too. I say Hagrid. Oh. Hagrid. I thought they said Hagrid in the movie too. Mm -hmm. Hagrid. The pronunciation. Maybe it is. He's my closest this week. Is he? He is. I think, he, I think I'm only related to a few of them. You're not. You and Betsy are both like way far off. Yeah, uh, we're way 25 far off. from him. Uh, Betsy, you're 24. Mm -hmm. right? yeah. But he's he's the closest for Betsy. Hagrid. Okay, I'll say Hagrid. <laughs> 22 for you for Richard Harris. Mm. Um, is your closest and wow. Betsy's closest is 22 from Ray Fines. Yeah. Mm. Okay. You're 47 from Richard Griffiths. Wow, that's really far. Pretty big yeah. ones. You're 46 from Richard Griffiths, um, Greg. Oh, okay. So anyways, Hagrid and I are 23rd cousins. Like, we're just like this. <laughs> 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 but again, thanks to the, uh, the browser extension, it tells me that right up front. 23rd cousins. We go back to the 1300s to find our common ancestors. So 15th here. Your 15th cousin? Yeah, through the Stewart family. Oh, nice. Um, so, uh, Anthony Robert uh, McMillan, uh, also known as Robbie Coltrane, um, born on the 30th of March, 1950, in Rutherglen, Glen, Scotland. Parents were Ian Baxter McMillan and Jean Ross McMillan. He had two sisters and known professionally as Robbie Coltrane, a tribute to the jazz saxophonist John Coltrane, which is very cool. Um, attended schools in Scotland and um, Perthshire, which is also part of Scotland, and the Glasgow School of Arts in Moray, in Moray House, College of Education. 
Oh, he was teased by his classmates for having a posh accent, and he gained the name Lord Fauntleroy. Um, when he grew up, he was involved with Amnesty International and the Labour Party, and was known as Red Robbie. Um, began uh, acting in 1970, and credited as a co-writer for many of those programs. Uh, he was in Black Adder uh, and The Young Ones, but of course, his most famous role is Rubius Haggard in the Harry Potter films. He was awarded Rubius. the Rubius. I don't think I knew what his first name was. Yeah, Rubius Haggard. Yeah, mm. um, it doesn't. It, they don't use his first name very often, but I think. Um, yes. One Dumbledore. of the later ones. Yeah. One of the later ones, Double, Dumbledore calls him by that. Like when he's in trouble. Yeah, probably. <laughs> yeah, that's probably it. Um, and yeah, he was ordered. The, uh, he was awarded the Order of the British Empire in 2006 for services to drama. Mm. One son, one daughter, died from multiple organ failure and sepsis. Very sad. Yeah. Next, we have Elena Bonham Carter. She's a wonderful actress. Born in the 60s, uh, May 26th, by, uh, to be precise. Um, so her, her precise uh, birth information, <laughs> writing on a tablet, <laughs> oh, you're so high, um, is in the biography, um, not in her... Uh, the profile data because she is still a living person. So this part is sort of private, but whatever you put in the bio is, is up for grabs apparently. Um, but this information is all available on Wikipedia anyways. Um, it lists a number, this is a nice long uh, profile, very interesting. And it goes into details of all the different connections. She is very well connected to lots of uh, different people. Um, her, one of her grandfathers was actually prime minister of, of the UK in the uh, just before World War I. Um, and the other grandfather had other connections. There was connections with the Rothschild family. Like, it's very interesting. Um, but uh, she's known for lots of different films. Room with a View. She was in uh, Fight Club. I didn't know. I don't, don't know if I've actually seen yeah. more than the first few minutes of Fight Club. So I don't remember you know, where. She whenever I think of Helen. Uh, Alan, Bo Alan Bonham Carter, whatever her name is, yeah. I think that she is the word eccentric. Yes. Yes. Yeah. She, she plays eccentric really well. Yes. Well, look at her, like her, some of her most famous stuff, like she played the Red Queen in Alice in Wonderland, you know, by definition, one of the most eccentric fictional characters ever. Yeah. Um, she was Mrs. Lovett in Sweeney Todd. Um, I don't know if you ever watched that musical, Sweeney Todd, The Demon Barber of Fleet Street. Yes. Bonkers character there. Of course, she was um, she was a partner of Tim Burton, so, you know, that's kind of bonkers in itself. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, of course, her, her uh, Bellatrix Lestrange in Harry Potter. But, you know, the first time um, I ever saw her act, I thought she was Canadian because it was a film called Margaret's Museum. Have you ever seen that one? It yeah. takes place in Nova Scotia, and it's about a mining town in Nova Scotia. And she, um, I think she ends up, she's uh, is a widow of a miner who was killed in a, a mine disaster. And it's very, and basically she's made a museum to the people that were lost in that. Nice. And it's very, like, it's so different from anything else she's ever done. Like, it's, it's very, um, what, what would you say? Like, narrow or straight? Like, you know, she... It's it's not eccentric at all. She's, yeah, it's very true to who she probably really is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and and she had a, a, a Canadian, a, like a Nova Scotia accent. So, you know, for the longest time, I thought, oh, she's a great Canadian actress. Yeah, it turns out she's not. Hey, hey. <laughs> she's a great Canadian. She's a great actress, just not Canadian. The power of a good diction coach. Oh, oh yeah. listen so to anyways, you. Anyways, I recommend that movie strong. Now it's not it's not a feel good movie. But it's a good dramatic movie. So Margaret's Museum, if you can find it. Okay. Moving on, we have Warwick Davis, um, who played Professor um, Sprout, right? Flitwick? No, wait a second. Oh, Chris is going to really... Is there a picture of him? Uh, so there's a picture of him. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, so he's done lots of stuff. He uh, also fa famous for playing Wicket, the Ewok in the Star Wars films. 
uh, and Willow, the, the movie Willow, which I think is getting, is, is it getting a remake or a, or a sequel or has it had, has a sequel come out? I can't help you. Um, and uh, he also, apparently he played Yoda in the scenes where Yoda had to be walking. So he put on the Yoda costume, I guess, and did that. Um, Flitwick, it is Flitwick, Professor Flitwick in the Harry Potter films. So this is a very interesting profile. It talks about actually his, he has a rare form of dwarfism called SED. I'm not sure what SED stands for. Um, uh, and he is a huge Star Wars fan. So that's not surprising because he's done a lot of Star Wars work. Um, his wife has, a, is also, has also been born with dwarfism, but it's a different condition. And sadly, when those two conditions meet, if a child has both of those conditions, um, then it's it's fatal and they lost two children because of that but they have four and the later two children were just born with only his so they've survived but it's very very heart-wrenching um red and green Thank oh you. look at that oh you've got the christmas colors up Let me just grab one there you go. <laughs> uh ralph fines who was lord voldemort and my 21st cousin twice removed <laughs> Again, back to the 1300s to find our common ancestor. Born in the 60s. Um, uh, so known for Lord Voldemort, but he's done lots of stuff, of course. Um, and uh, so the interesting thing here that I learned is that I didn't know before is that in the one of the later movies where there was a flashback to young Voldemort, whose name was Tom Riddle, the person who played Tom, young Tom Riddle was actually his nephew. So, oh. so if you thought there might have been a family resemblance, you know, that's really good casting. That young Tom Riddle looks a bit like what the actor who plays Voldemort. You can spot the fines boys everywhere. What's that? You can spot those fines boys everywhere. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And they're great actors. The yeah. guy in uh, Handmaid's Tale. Oh, yes. And there's an, the, a third one that's a famous. There is a third one, isn't there? Yeah. Yeah. Neat. Um... Richard Thomas Griffiths, uh, who I'm 46 degrees from. So way, uh, and that would be through multiple marriages probably. Uh, born 1947 uh, in Yorkshire, England. Died at 2013 at age 65 in Coventry, West Midlands, England. Um, and uh, his biography is very short, um, but he is a OBE, uh, Order of the British Empire. Um, and he had, he had, uh, he's known for being Uncle Vernon, of course. Yeah, poor thing. I know. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But he's done other, he, he's done a number of other movies too, um, none of which I can remember offhand. And I didn't check out his Wikipedia article, but I'm not going to get distracted. I'm going to get through these in a timely <laughs> fashion today. So I will focus, continue on. Um, Richard St. John Francis Harris. Wow, that's kind of cool. Um, I've never seen St. John as a middle name before. So, um, but maybe because he was born in Ireland, they just give out saint names as middle names. <laughs> Who knows? Uh, born on the 1st of October, 1930 in Limerick, County Limerick, Ireland. Um, and passed away on the 25th of October, 2002. So Richard Harris, of course, was the first actor to play Albus Dun Dumbledore. And um, he was, uh, but along with being an actor, what I didn't realize, he was also a singer and a songwriter. He was in Camelot. Yes. Yes. I see that. I see that here. I didn't Every realize I that before. Camelot, yes. That's he was King that's Arthur. The version I see is him. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, a Man Called Horse, um, 1970 movie. Uh, he was a gunfighter in Unforgiven, the Clint Eastwood movie. Uh, and now I did see him in Gladiator. He was the emperor, Marcus Aurelius. Um, and his, his biggest hit in terms of song was in 1968 when he recorded, um, MacArthur Park, which is kind of neat. My Saint, high school band played that. St. John is a surname, a family surname. Perhaps that's why it's a middle name. That's from Eric. Ah, and well, that's well, the whole middle name thing. Uh -huh. Mm -hmm. I, vote we keep it. I vote we keep it. Yeah. That's how I can tell the difference between my John Smiths. 
<laughs> oh yeah, no, we we definitely need that middle name field for sure. There we go. Um, and John Vincent Hurt, commander of the British Empire, uh, born the 22nd of January 1940 in Chesterfield, Derbyshire, England, and passed away sadly on the 25th of January 2017, age 77, in Norfolk, England. Um, That's a furry picture of him. A furry, yeah, I know. Eh? <laughs> it's, things got away from him there, I guess. Um, that's the day before he went to the, the barbers, you know, <laughs> this time. it's a handlebar mustache. Yeah, that's right. So let's, um, look at the note here. John Hurt CBE is managed by the genealogy in the media project. Is that, I guess that's one of our projects. I'd never heard of that project. Me neither. Cool. Interesting. Well, let's just, what is okay, we're about? taking one little diversion. Let's yeah, just... let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Please time out while we take, get distracted. Um, welcome to the Genealogy and the Media Project. Our mission is? If, uh, where's the mission say? Global Community Outreach Subproject. Mm -hmm. The goal of the Genealogy and the Media Project is to document the profiles of people who have appeared on genealogical media from across the globe, huh. improving them to the best of our ability with the thorough and accurate sources, strong bios, and connected to the global tree. A living sub media. Hmm. So does that mean that you and, and Betsy and I are oh. being worked on? I don't know. <laughs> Wiki tree day. What is we we W D Y T Y A? What do you what do you think you are? You know, I never oh, knew who, do you you who, do you, who do you think you are? Oh. That's a show. Yeah. Gotcha. yeah. Finding your roots. Oh, okay. So people who've been on those shows. Yeah. Uh, Big genealogy shows. Not little genealogy. Not little shows. genealogy shows. I think we should put our hosts on here though, too. Yeah. We're, <laughs> we're a little show. We're still we can. Oh well. Um, people can find our profiles if they want. Um, anyways, he uh knighted for his drama, done lots of different roles. Um, in Harry Potter, of course, he was the uh, proprietor of Ollivander's, the where all the young wizards and uh, witches got their wands from. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, and he did a great job doing that. Um, he was so so straight laced, you know. As Harry came in and tried things, and things exploded around the the shop. And he know? said, "I've been waiting for you, Harry." Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's right. Yeah, I knew you were coming. It didn't bother him that you know he destroyed half the shop before he found the one that worked. No, just went on. Um, well, and of course, it was the one that was the exact match. Yes. To, uh, you know who. You know who. Shall not be named, right? I think the first memorable film that I saw with him was The Elephant Man, where he played John Merrick, The Elephant Man. Mm -hmm. And I remember seeing that because it was being shown for free at uh, when I was at university in the big sort of cam campus center. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember sitting on the floor. <laughs> I think Julie was visiting that weekend too, um, but anyways, that was a uh, that was great. He's a great actor, and in my the other fandom, of course, uh, he played the um, <laughs> uh, he played the doctor, the war doctor. So he was a time lord in Doctor Who. Who's your favorite doctor? Who's Mine's my David favorite Kennett. doctor? David Kennett. Uh, well, the very first, the very first one that I watched uh, was, um, I think, was David Tennant. So he and Donna, as her as the companion, were my favorite initial ones. But I've I've enjoyed every one of them since then. So, you know, the current Doctor is often my favorite Doctor, sort of. But well, and David Kennett's back, isn't he? And David and Donna are both back, so that's going to be great, you know. But I really did. Um, um, uh, I think the the most recent one, uh, Jodie Whittaker, she did a great job as the doctor, and uh, she, did. Think, she did. She uh, did. She got a lot of you, flack about it, though. She got a lot of flack about it, and you know, it's not not her fault. I mean, some of the scripts may have had some some issues, and they had to they had to deal with filming during COVID and all that stuff. So there were so many restrictions placed placed on on her and the whole production that not her fault. But uh, I think she did a great job. You know. 
even despite all of those little hardships. So hmm. I was really happy with everything that she had done. So, uh, you know what, Lisa, I don't watch Doctor Who either, but I have so many friends that do that I that I get it, get it by osmosis. Get it by osmosis. <laughs> you should try it. Try it. I know. I, 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 I do. I'm going to watch Who. I'm going to watch it from the beginning. <laughs> oh, you mean from the first one, An Un Unearthly Child from November 1963? Oh, my God. Okay. You got a problem, Greg. What? You have a serious <laughs> problem. <laughs> <laughs> so do people who watch Doctor Who have a nickname like Trekkies or Trekkers? Or... Yeah, Whovians. Whovians. What do you people call Star Wars groupies? Mm, I don't know. Why do Trekkies, know. why do we Trekkies have names and you people don't? That's, that's a good question. There's got to be a name. I don't know. Daniel Radcliffe is our next one. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I'm determined I'm going to live Betsy at least a decent amount of time. Um, so, and oh my some of God, these are, 11 already. I know, I know. So I'm, I've gone past my 20 minutes for sure. Um, Daniel Radcraft, born in the 1980s. Um, then lots of, of course, famous for Harry, playing Harry Potter himself. Um, his par Apparently, so uh, he was uh, at age five, uh, he started, he decided he wanted to be an actor. Great at age 10. He was in David Copperfield, where he acted with um, uh, Maggie Maggie Smith, <gasps> and apparently Maggie Smith was uh, had recommended him uh, for the role, or so that's one of the reasons why he was uh, he auditioned and got uh, tapped on the shoulder. Um, but the other th interesting thing I, I noticed here from this very well written profile is that when he was first offered the part, his parents. Um, didn't want him to take it because it meant seven films and originally it was planned to be filmed in in LA and then I guess they came back and said well what if we just you know we guarantee where is it here do, 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 do. He, uh, his parents initially turned turned the offer down because there was going to be for seven films shot in Los Angeles and then he was offered just two films shot in the UK which obviously they didn't then extended to the full eight films mm -hmm. that we have um so imagine how different the whole thing would have been if it actually had taken place and filmed in the States. It just wouldn't have had the same, no. same you know, wouldn't have when been When I right. send people pictures of Ottawa from looking from the canal yeah. up to the Chateau Laurier, mm -hmm. over Union Station to Parliament, people always say, oh my gosh, that looks like... Uh, ah! Oh, Tam, in the Thames. It, it looks Thames? like the town in Harry Potter. Oh yeah, so people uh, always say it looks like a Harry Potter set. So they could have filmed uh, it here. Interesting. Very cool. There, there is a name for the town, right? Remember when you reach? Oh yeah, third year, they go on. Go yeah, when they go and leave, they go to um, oh, Diagon no. Alley. No, 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 no. That's where they buy the the things. Um, oh oh yeah, 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 yeah. Oh my goodness, my mind's a blank. Somebody get us the town in Harry Potter. Yeah, where the school oh, is, on. right outside, right outside the castle. Yeah, it is. Um, Brady Bots, Beans. There you go. Oh, okay. Uh, I'll continue on with um, Alan Sidney Patrick Rickman. <laughs> um, Hogsmeade. Hogsmeade. Thank you, man. Yes, yes. Way to go. Way to go. Uh, Alan Rickman was born uh, 21st of February 1946, Hammersmith, London, England. So is Hammersmith is a is a district or a suburb neighborhood in London? I believe so. Yes, must be a the tube station. Oh, is it? I think so. Yeah. Oh. And he passed away the fourteenth of January, twenty sixteen, at age sixty nine. Way too young, um, cancer, I believe. Uh, he had a number of notable uh, roles. Of course, he was Professor Snipe, uh, Snape in harry potter but he also was hans gruber in the original die hard movie and <laughs> I, I just watched the original die hard movie for the first time i think it was last year because um people kept saying you know it's a christmas movie and so i thought well i guess i'll watch it you know those types of movies aren't usually my thing but it was it was interesting and i thought wait a second that guy I, he looks familiar somehow <laughs> turns out it was snape um uh, Professor Sheriff of Nottingham. 
I loved him in Galaxy Quest. Do you guys watch Galaxy Quest? It's a it's a great movie. Um, it's really a spoof of Star Trek conventions because the whole premise is that this whole cast of this whole cast of a like a Star Trek like show, you know, are going to this convention and then they get sucked up um, uh, in outer space by people who think they actually are Trekkie, like actual um, spacefaring, you know, adventurers or whatever. So it's funny. Mm -hmm. So That's people. we'll we'll run over, no worries. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we have about 10 pictures. We'll be fine. I'm Anyways. Good. Yeah, I have um, I actually have an appointment that's happening at 11 and oh no. I'm good. I've already warned everybody I'm gonna be late. Okay, good. Uh anyways, he did lots of stuff. He also was in Sweeney Todd. Um, he played the judge in uh Judge Turpin in Sweeney Todd. Are you playing six degrees again? I'm not. I'm just reading them. I'm just helping them. I'm just looking through And he here. was also in this movie, and they were Yeah, that's right. There we go. And, and why wasn't Maggie Smith in this list? She is. I just haven't got to her yet. Really? Let me How get to I her quickly, that? though. So here's J.K. Rowling. Oh, there the she actual is. Rowling. 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 I think is the right pronunciation. Um, and daughter of Pete Rowling and Anne Vallant. Um, born in the 60s. And that's about all we have for her profile. She's still a living person and she's fairly private. So that's all we have here, but at least we have her. Now, let's see if I look at her family tree and genealogy. That has been fairly well researched. Um, this is, this could, um, one would think you could get a little bit further back here, maybe. But uh, anyways, um, her, maybe we her should family have tree. J.K. Rowling is one of our celebrities. I don't know if she should go for that though. She's so mm -hmm. private. Mm -hmm. That's right. Here we have Dame Maggie Smith, and she is the last. She's the last one. Yeah, she's the last. Uh, Dame Maggie Smith. Um, yay. Dame uh, Dame Commander of the British uh, Empire. Um, wonderful actress. Um, born on the twenty eighth of December, nineteen thirty four, Ilford, Essex, England. Um, she had tw twin older brothers. Um, moved to Oxford in nineteen thirty eight. She began studying uh, at the Oxford Playhouse School at age 16. And her first role was when she was 22 in Twelfth Night. Uh, and then she was part of a musical comedy called Share My Lettuce. What a great name for her. <laughs> uh, Lawrence Olivier himself invited Maggie to join his uh, theater company at the Old Vic. Um, she served her first Oscar nomination from playing Desdemona in Othello. Uh, anyway, she's won lots of stuff. Prime of Miss Jean Brody, uh, uh, the Academy Award for Best Actress in that Downton one. Downton Abbey. Downton Abbey, yes. So yeah. besides yeah. Professor McGonagall, Downton Abbey is probably the other thing she's most known for. The, mm -hmm. the Dowager Countess, Violet Crawley. Yeah, she was wonderful. She in that. can look down her nose with the best oh, of them. Oh man, I just love her. Her one-liners, her put downs were just zingers. Um, zingers. Yes, yes, that's right. Yeah. So she's look at this. She's added more letters after her name when she was made uh, companion uh, Order of the Companions of Honor for service Graham. The only other actress to receive this honor are Dame Sybil Thorndike and Dame Judy Dench. So. Uh, great, great actress, uh, two children, five grandchildren, uh, nice profile, good stuff. I'm done. <laughs> wow. Oh. <laughs> wow. You have, you have a minute for each one of your pictures today. Okay, here we go. Uh, let me you go might want to blow your screen oh. up there. How's that? Is that good? More? Why is your screen not big, though? There we go. Yeah. What, what? But her screen, if you look down at the at the bottom underneath, the screen is full, but it's showing up oh. tr truncated or something. That's interesting. Something... Should I try reloading the page? Or... Oh, that didn't help. That's odd. So wait, I, I, think, I think it's just like... because of this one photograph, because it's more portraity than landscapey. More They're... portraity than landscapey. Like yes. those later ones, are they? <laughs> those are technical terms, you know. <laughs> yeah. <Tech talk. laughs> okay. Can every can everybody see? Okay. Yes. Okay. Yep. 
Um, so the theme for the photos this week were, was winter. And Alexis Nelson had the first photo of her husband's great grandparents. Nice. And uh, I, I really chuckled at uh, someone commented, um, uh, you can tell his face says, I got to shovel this when we get home. <laughs> he, he does not look pleased. Or he's, <laughs> he's looking to figure out what where he needs to start his shoveling. <laughs> Oh. Where is this picture taken? Does it say? Uh, let's see. In Missouri. Springfield, Missouri. Or uh, Missouri. 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 Yeah. It's a lot of slow snow for Missouri, isn't it? Um, Azure wants you to try and maximize the screen, your computer screen. How so happy to? How do I do that? <laughs> if you've got a, if you're, it's you're on a Mac. Yes. Um, and on Windows, you can you've got a button to restore down or make your yeah. maximize the screen. It's the green. It's the little green dot in the top corner. Cool. Will maximize. Okay. Thank you so much, Greg. Uh, the little green. Oh, so, that. You know the stoplights. Yeah. The. There you go. Okay. Woo. Thank you. Thank no you, problem. Azure. <laughs> Hive mind. We got it done. <laughs> um. Here's an adorable one of two little guys sledding. Nice. Uh, Pat Miller is on the left. How cute. I know. What and year this was, was that? 1954. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if it says where, but just uh, making the comment that life goes on. When you're used to winter weather, life just goes on mm -hmm. you get outside and you go about your business it certainly does here i like that mm -hmm. <laughs> um this one was interesting um oh. sarah yeah sarah, sarah. Ponies. ponies ponies and 19 during the blizzard of 1978 this is from john vasky uh and they are out looking for horses that had gotten loose during the storm it says the snow got so high that ours and our landlord's horses just walked over the fence. And when I it's had I had a four pound puppy that we had so much snow here, he walked over our eight foot stockade fence. <gasps> wow. wow! Been there, done that. <laughs> this is uh, in Illinois. And John himself was on a horse on the other side of town, roping a rowdy two-year-old filly. Wow. <laughs> they got seven or six or seven horses and ponies, a goat, and someone's milk cow rounded did up. Did you have milk after milk that? Milk cow. <laughs> or did you return the cow? <laughs> wow. Uh, oh, this gorgeous. From the 90s. Nice. Our house in the snow from mm -hmm. Mark Weinheimer. Don't know where, but it's lovely. Yeah. Beautiful day there. Okay. Here we have Donald Collins, his unknown girlfriend mm. and his sister, Beatrice Collins. Mm. Um, and um, from Jim, I'm sorry if I mispronounce your name, Weiberg. Um, and Jim would love to know if anyone recognizes the lady in the middle. Hmm. Please send him a message. Um, also an interesting comment about um, you think he would be cold, but Navy undershirts were woven wool. wool. Hmm. Remarkably warm. Right. Uh, next is a, a tin, a copy of a tin type. Wow. It's really an amazing photo. Wow. Yeah. Nils looking. Ooh. Nils looking. Thank you. That was so good. Yes. Good one. <laughs> uh, pictured here in their winter outfits. And they had emigrated to um, Iowa, where the winters were still very cold, like what they were used to. And yeah. sadly, Johan passed away. Um, in childbirth at about Aww. four years after this was taken. Um, what a treasure to have yeah. that. 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And he said his cousin has the original and that uh, he will he will eventually uh, inherit it. Yeah. Winter in California involves rain, not snow. <laughs> All their colorful rain ponchos, mm-hmm. and umbrellas, Joyce. Uh, here, this is from Canada, right? Uh, John Thompson, uh, nice. British, British Columbia, am I right? Um, early this year, first snow oh, arrived. Beautiful beautiful yeah. sunset nice yeah Very nice gorgeous i love it when it snows and you're out like i went to a concert once over in wake whitefield and coming home it snowed while we were there coming mm. home there wasn't anybody on the roads because the roads were bad and that's kind of in the mountains uh the gatineau hills but coming down all the snow was heavy and all the fir and spruce trees on the oh it was mm-hmm. gorgeous oh yes is that do you think that's a lake off here to the to the right looks Hard like hell well if it's bc it could be the pacific ocean it actually there looks like a, there's a power tower or something yes i see that yeah it could be oh. the pacific ocean yeah um it could be an inlet <clears throat> yeah. right right okay oh uh, this is mine i could found be Molly's this. reach <laughs> I found this uh, when I was looking for something else. Is that you? That is me. Oh my Aww. God, you're adorable. Okay, I love <laughs> your so picture. Sweet. Thank oh, you. Adorable. <laughs> I love orange, uh, red and and yellow orange like that. I don't yeah. know why. Uh, my, my mom usually did not dress me up in this color palette, but this, so this <laughs> really stood out. <laughs> That's funny. About three years old. Be glad you're not wrapped like the Michelin man. Uh, yes, mm. yes. Um, and we did have, I'm going to, oh, I can't escape. How can I? Oh, uh, uh, you have to. Wait. Okay. All right. Sticky, yeah. There was one other photo that was on the free space page. Make sure you maximize your screen again. I, I mm-hmm. did. How's, how's that look? Share You're this. Minimized. Do you need to, there you go. Okay. All right. So we've seen that and that. Yeah, mm-hmm. what the ponies? Deja vu. Getting the deja vu here. Yeah, deja vu all over again. <laughs> this one. Quite little. Oh, this look at wow. that! Wow, our daughter sledding at Portland Headlight in Maine. From mm. that's nice. Nice. Who posted that? I don't know who posted that. That you sort know. of reminds me of the White Sands Hotel, you know, from Anne of Green Gables. Oh yeah. <laughs> huh. Oh. Somebody asked me yesterday where to go for seafood in the mm. States. And I said, Calabash, North Carolina. It's like oh, just no. north of Myrtle Beach. And then I'm thinking that somebody who wants to drive down from Canada, and I'm thinking, why didn't I tell them Portland, Maine? Mm. That's a good place to go for seafood, too. So mm-hmm. somebody's saying oh. yes. Lisa says yes, Greg, to you. About for, yeah, the White Sands Hotel from Anna Green Gables, yes. But right. yeah, the other place in Canada to go for seafood is Shediac, Prince Edward Island. They have a lobster festival every Sunday or every I had, summer. I, I went out of my way. I spoke at a conference in Halifax and I went out of my way to have lobster in Halifax. Mm. And somebody said, you know, it's not fresh. And I'm like, don't tell me that. It's, it's fresher than you can get in Ontario. How, how can you say it's not fresh? Yeah. We've got some stuff coming up. We um, do. Here we go. There are some questions that Chris is asking. So some of those important questions, like the Ooh. public view tab. Why well, haven't seen that? Um, and then down here, there's the uh, oh, then I have the other one. I'm like, oh, should we remove the middle name field? Ooh. I don't think I I don't agree, I don't think so. But if you want to have a vote on that, let's see how the mm-hmm. vote's going. So make sure you upvote that. Okay. But um, let's go down here. 101 say yes. And 51 say no, and oh. I was one of those. And then I was also one of those. Yeah. I but, would absolutely hate to lose this field. Yeah. Um, I mean, they can be such a good clue, like to family yeah. names that are. Well, and what Mindy is saying is that you can put the middle name in the first name field. And a lot of the JEDCOMs do that in port. Hmm. They import the middle name in the mm-hmm. first name field. Being somebody who does a lot of work with data removing a field with the possibility of doing searches just on that field is what bothers me. 
Mm -hmm. Um, so I don't know. It's, uh, it's, it's, uh, an interesting question. So go over and check that. And the the public view, I don't have any issues with that. I haven't really voted on that yet. Mm -hmm. We've got, uh, Mariah Carey's ancestors register now to help with Mariah Carey. Um, and Mindy as popping, piping up in the background there saying, join us for the challenge. Mm -hmm. If you haven't already. Is this the last one of the year? Uh, yeah. Mariah Carey? Well, Um, Let's see if it's well, if it's a Christmas special, that would make sense, right? Yeah, 15th of December <laughs> through 22nd of December. Unless they start one on Christmas Day, I don't think so. I don't think they yeah. will. So Mariah um, Carey, which is kind of apropos, since she has the number one Christmas song ever written. Oh, mm-hmm. yes? Yeah, mm-hmm. you, don't, you don't know that. No, I, I do. I'm just I'm not going to Trying to forget? <laughs> I'm just not going to sing it, no. Yeah, Mariah is the last one, Mindy says. So you've got that one coming up. If you've got uh, some time, jump over and help out with that. Uh, let's see. And again, if you want to figure out how to celebrate Wikitree's 15th anniversary, um, you're going to be uh, it, jump in on that and help out. Uh, there's actually an events uh, group that's working together. If you want to join that, let Aon know. Yeah. Um, and I've got a, there's an upcoming event this Wednesday, actually. Yep. Um, very shortly, Alesh is going to make a post and, um, and I'll ask, ask Alesh anything. <gasps> so I think it's going to be a, a monthly occurrence. I did that once. To, what's that? I did that once. You did that once. <laughs> yeah. And, and I was on the computer for five hours with my mouth dropped <laughs> open. And it zoomed me through stuff. It was crazy. Yeah. There was an a, a, ask Alesh anything um, uh, hour th- hour long thing during the uh, wiki tree day um so anyways it's going to be next wednesday december 6th uh it's gonna be at 9 a.m eastern time so whatever that works out to again i didn't do that uh i think that would be what 1 p.m utc um so i'm going to be the host i'm going to be the one asking alesh the questions he'll be answering and stuff so um that'll be on the youtube channel so come back here next wednesday morning I'll be here tonight, uh, Eastern Time, I think seven, I think six, seven or eight, uh, the genealogy show I'm talking about, next generation sequencing testing, if you're interested in hopping over for that. that's It's a great show, great virtual event. Betsy, you've got uh, something coming up tomorrow, and then what? Yes, yes. Um, tomorrow we have another um, new member Zoom um, which will be, let's see, Eastern time. Uh, it'll be 11 o'clock Eastern time. Uh, Eowyn and, and I, and, uh, maybe Hillary Gatsby, uh, who's in the, in the chat. Um, and that'll be zoom call details are in the G2G post. And one more thing, there's bingo on <gasps> Friday. Bingo's coming. Bingo is coming. Excellent. On Friday. Fantastic. Hi, they, uh, there, there's the, there's the, the link. If you want to put us on your calendar, we will not be here on the 24th, but we will be here on the 31st. Bring your party hat and your noisemakers for our New Year's Eve party. I believe we were talking about doing drinking games. We haven't figured out what, uh, what word will make everybody take a drink, but uh, we will have champagne. On our end, you bring your own. (laughs) (laughs) Have a good week, and we will see you next week. See you next week. Bye. Bye. Maybe, sort of. Yeah.